Yeah, it's Bond Simmons, the local legend, representing the New Religion Network, here with my boy Mikey T, the movie star, on Report Card Radio. Y'all know what's up. Bond Simmons, welcome back, man. I appreciate you joining me today on the show. Oh, man, I appreciate you having me, Mikey T, man. It's all love, man. I appreciate the love and support, man. Well, Bond, today... Today, Bonds, you're actually bringing a new project with you. It just dropped. It's called The Local Legend. Yep. Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's quality. I got a couple features on there, of course. I got the joint with Kid Kid. Got the joint with Dark Low, Freedom Men. Um, I got Bigger Ranking, the OG Bigger Ranking on there. Um, shout out to my artist, Glow Music. Got him on there. Uh, got Zagu Wap, young boy from my hood, Southside. Um, it's dope, man. Legendary Phil, bars, some production, man. Shout the WSA, the home team. Shout the SV Guard Beats. Got me some fire. Um, I had a point to prove, so I just I just went in. You know what I mean? And um, kept it new religion. Kept it, you know, consistent with the brand. Guard first, by any means. So, Buns, how does it feel to actually get the project out, man? Ah, uh, man, that's a good question, cause. It actually felt really good, man. It felt like I accomplished something, man. It felt like I really achieved something because not only was I able to articulate myself the right way and come across the right way and capture the right songs, I was able to get them together and put them out on all platforms for the whole world. Like, I was able to release that. Like, it felt like a huge accomplishment, bro, for sure. So what were some of the tracks that you want everyone to check out on the Local Legend album? Wow. Um, every song has, like, significant meaning, man. But um, I think the ones that's probably going to grab people more, uh, the joint, the flip the flip check with Kid Kid is, is a dope track, good energy. Um, joint with Dark Low, that Free the Men. You know what I'm saying? Talking about the brothers incarcerated and, and, and you know what I mean? Shouting them out and, and, and talking about the, you know, the, the the trials and tribulations that come with being incarcerated on both ends, the family members and all of that. So, you know, things like that. Um, Got an R.I.P. Prodigy joint where I'm going crazy like bars. You better believe it joint. Like, <clears throat> I can't even, I don't even know, man. Like, um, that project, man, it's, it's, it ain't that long. You know what I mean? It's, Less than 40 minute listen. I think that's going to grab them though, man. But um, I don't know if I had to snatch. Ah, I don't even know, man. I can't take one. For everyone watching the interview and everyone tapping in with us, the link for the album Local Legend will be available in the description. I'm going to attach both the Spotify and the YouTube so everybody can stream it and check it out. Now, let's talk about the project a little bit. And you've got a three-part documentary that you attach to it. But can you tell me and our audience why you actually titled the joint Local Legend? Yeah, I, definitely. I made it Local Legend because I just feel like um, the ups and downs that my career has took, you know what I mean? It took me to get to the point that I'm at now with my music. It was like, it's legend. It's like legend, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's one of those legendary stories. And just, you know, being the fact that, you know, it didn't come out to, to you know, it wasn't widely publicized, you know what I'm saying? It's still a local story, so, you know what I mean? And me still feeling like, you know what I mean? I'm lyrically in my prime or just really I'm at the best I've ever been. Um, I just feel like it was it, it was the perfect title. It was Local Legend. Like, you know what I mean? It was an idea I kind of had for a while, but it it came. It was just that seed planted, I guess, that, you know what I mean, to, to show me the future because now was the time and this was the album. You know what I mean? So, so Southside Jamaica, Queens, 109. Can you yes, tell sir. me what was, what was most notable for you growing up on that block? Um, then or now? Back then. Take me back to the days, man. We're getting back into the street days. Back then, I would have to say the names, man. The, um, you know, the, the, the history of the hood, man, coming from Southside. You know, everybody heard the stories of Preem and, and, and Fat Cat and the Bebos and all of that. Like, you know, that's my, 
that's that's those exact blocks that I grew up on. So, you know, those, you know, and names and, and you know, other greats and, you know, just being from Queens, that pride, man, just being a Queens person and just knowing that, you know what I mean, out here in this jungle and in these hoods and this city and, you know what I mean, you got to rep that. So it was like, you know, um, you know, the, the history of the, like the Nazis, the, the Lost Boys, the Onyx, the, you know what I mean? Those, those people that come. So it was just, for me as a, as a young, you know what I mean, artist and street dude, that was kind of like, you know what I mean? The thing for me. How did the figures like the Supremes and the groups like G Unit gain influence in your hood? Um, I, w- I would say they kind of set the bar maybe if we was outside, you know what I'm saying? If we was outside, the theme was the, 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 get, the organize and get money, right? And elude the police um keep it real and you know i guess those was the last dudes from you know from from that same area those same blocks that did it they set a blueprint for the for the you know when i was thinking you know under when when i wasn't thinking you know when i was a zombie more or less you know what i'm saying but i was holding on to those you know those street tactics and, and those morals and you know they laid the foundation so you know so um, G-Unit and Supreme, obviously two separate entities, you know, G-Unit more of the music, Supreme more known for the streets. So how was it when G-Unit started to take over in your hood? Was it more of a music friendly environment or was that always around? Mm, the music was always around. I wouldn't say friendly, right? So you can say the music environment, but I wouldn't even say music friendly environment because the music environment wasn't friendly. But I guess um, to answer that question, I guess it would be like a new day, a dawn of a new day, because with the with the preem and those things, like the thing that was given birth, they gave birth to like the um, you know like like Fifty wasn't down with them, but still, you, you know, it's kind of people kind of affiliate them with that because of the situation. But even before that, they was like Murder Inc was affiliated with them. Irv Gotti and Ja Rule and them was affiliated with them. And, you know, Ja Rule had history from being in the game for a while. So at this time after, you know, when 50's coming in and then he's, you know, out doing Ja Rule and putting Ja Rule down, it's like, this is like, okay. And he's kind of um, not, I would just say, not really respecting the, you know, the preem and the whole situation and their history and stuff like that. So he's kind of showing a new, you know, a new, a new day, you know what I'm saying? A new thug, a new gangster, a new, a new thing. So, and that was like, you know, forget, you know, some, that's why some people say, you know, 50 messed up hip hop by, you know, beef with everybody, but you know what I'm saying? But just coming with that approach, like, nah, like, you know what I'm saying? We gangsta our own way. We ain't, we ain't jacking none of that old stuff. So it, it was like a new, it was like a new day, but I wouldn't say friendly, you know what I'm saying? But it was, it was music and it was a new day, you know what I'm saying? But it definitely wasn't friendly. So let's talk about Ice from G Unit. Um, rest in peace. Um, sure, rest in peace. Birthday was just the other day, a few days ago. A word, rest in peace, Ice. Um, how did you get a chance to be around him and others? Well, I grew up with Ice. Like we grew up in the same hood, so um, I'm talking like junior high school. Like you know what I'm saying before. Um, you know you got Merrick and um, God Brew is two boulevards. So 109 may be the block. I'm from 109 and God Brew. You know, it's only the next block would be 164. And then the next, where my actual mom's house was. And the next block is like 164 Place. It's like one more block. And then there's a big boulevard. It's Merrick Boulevard. So Ice was from like right there. My junior high school was on Merrick. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, kids wasn't going to school. We outside. You know what I mean? Running through the parks, same parks and all that. So probably about 16, 17, 18 maybe something like that. Like around that time, I started hanging on 109 on my block with the, with the dudes over there. So, you know what I'm saying? And that's when him and Flip, which was, you know what I'm saying, never dude I went to, I actually went to school and since elementary school, um, Star, you know what I'm saying? And then Flip who lived across the street right there on 109, you know what I'm saying? The whole time, like, you know what I mean? So I always, we always, we knew each other like it's the same neighborhood. So it wasn't it, like meeting nobody. It was like, we always knew each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? Type situation for sure. 
so what do you remember? I mean, at this point, was ICE already G Unit, or what do you remember about G Unit starting to, you know, come into your now, when I guess when when you know when Fifty was putting a team together, I guess he was doing his own thing and putting the team together. Um, I was saying in hindsight, who kind of pulled them in was Smurf. It would be Smurf because Smurf was from one three four, but he was a young goonie too, and 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 ICE was a young goonie too. So you know what I mean. Dudes from the hood that already is is known for like you know what I'm saying for you know dudes that's known for being around the hood and you know what I'm saying like it's like a underground network you know what I'm saying of of street niggas that's you know men just in the streets we may go to school we may got kicked out of school and fighting you know what I mean so it's that underground network everybody kind of knows each other so Fifty snatching um and, and Smurf from down there so Fifty automatically you know what I mean fucking with Smurf, and then, you know, Smurf would be come to 109, which is the, you know what I'm saying? Not to just say because that's my block, but which is, like, you know, one of the greasiest blocks in the South Side, like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Now, that's Ice, Flip, Star, them is all, you know what I mean? Wook, you know what I mean? All, this is all 109. This is all 109, like, you know what I'm saying? So, now... When 50 start popping and now these dudes is around. So now these, you know, when 50 was first coming out, all the dudes with the vests on, white tees and the vests, and, and that's that's you know what I mean? All of these dudes. So um it just kind of happened like that. So it was like that's the thing, niggas went from, you know what I mean, just I guess regular soldiers to now niggas is G unit soldiers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas got the G on them. 50 took them, put the G on them. And it was in the loop, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully, like, you know what I'm saying? Man, that's lit. I really appreciate you bro breaking down some of that history for me. You know, everybody can hear that on the Local Legend album. You know, and on the album, you actually said, took an L and I learned from it. Were you referring to your incarceration? Hell yeah, man. Um, Not just my incarceration, though, but yeah, my incarceration. Um, My fall from all of the... I took so many L's. So, you know what I'm saying? But just yeah, the incarceration and 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 just feeling like I I was I lost the person that I was and and everything that I was doing kind of came to an end. You know what I'm saying? So I had to reshape. So it was like a big L on every aspect. Like you know what I'm saying, I lost friends. You know what I'm saying? I can't I ain't had the same friends. I ain't had the same. You know what I'm saying? Relationship changed with my with my wife. Like everything, everything was different. So. Everything was lost, you know what I'm saying? But it was only to come back better, you know what I'm saying? And be on better foundation. How much did your time in jail impact you when you were locked up? Were you even thinking about coming home as a rapper? Yeah, no, I wasn't because, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I was turning 30 and I was like, you know what I'm saying? As young, I was just like, it was over, like, you know what I'm saying? For music, like, but it, it, was, it was hard for me to accept because... I didn't have other plans for myself besides music. You know what I'm saying? Like my whole life I had looked like, you know what I'm saying? Like literally from the age of probably like 12 or maybe before that, I, I had assumed that, you know what I'm saying? I was going to be a successful rapper. So I never, you know what I mean? So now as I'm approaching 30, you know what I'm saying? In prison, I'm not a rapper. And I'm, just, I'm thinking like, oh, you know what I'm saying? This is not. You know what I'm saying? So, and then after, you know, going through the whole prison situation, like, I wasn't even in a creative, you know what I mean, space. Like, you know what I mean? So I wasn't making music and stuff. Like, but then when I guess when I came home, I like, I made a couple songs just because I had people waiting for me. Like, some people was writing me. And then I had, you know, people like, oh, my man had just built the studio. And like, Yo, I mean, come on, I, let's do this. I. So I, rec I was recording a couple songs, but my mind, I just, I didn't know what I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? With myself. Wow. And then we just moved to Atlanta. Yeah, I say that because on the documentary, the local legend documentary, you actually said that when you came home, you actually set up a business for yourself. You set up a business. I believe it was a trucking business before actually jumping back into the music scene. Right. Yeah. So we moved to Atlanta. I bay moms went to move to Atlanta, so we moved to Atlanta. And um, yeah, I was like, I, I just I wanted to do I had to do that's when I you know I'm, I 
let me start doing something else. I don't, I don't want to waste my time doing this music. You know what I'm saying? Let me try to do something else. So, yeah, I got a little truck. And at first, I started a moving company. And um, then I started, you know, grinding with that. And then I just started, you know. And then I guess shaking the, you know, shaking the gel off and and all of that. And that, and it, and then I think that's when I started initially probably writing again. I still wasn't like trying to be a rapper, but I started writing again. Like, you know what I'm saying? I started feeling like that's a little swag. Started seeing some success from business and stuff. You know what I mean? For sure.